was lost in shame Could not get past my brain Until he called out my name I'm so glad he changed me Darkness fell me down Jesus pulled me out From the long ground I'm so glad he changed me See I A new creation of the past The old is gone this time I live my faith on my side There is a
Good morning. Good morning. Excuse me, <laughs> I forgot my book. Hallelujah. Okay. Here we go. Thank you, Lord. I can't, I can't forget my memory. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's such a great day, guys. Amen. We have a lot to be grateful for, right? Yes. Amen. Well, I'm... Pastor Sherm's better half. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, Pastor Stacy would like to send her love to you all this morning. She regrets because she didn't really feel like coming this morning. So I'd like for all of you, please keep her in your prayers. She can't rest very well at night, she says. So. We need to pray that the peace of God will overwhelm her. Amen. 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 So keep her in your prayers. Uh, first time visitors this morning, you'll find a card in the chair ahead of you on the back part of it. And if you would like to fill this out, Brother Tom back here, if you give that card to him, he's got his hand up back here. Give that card to him and he has a gift for you. We want to bless you, okay? All right. Last night, we had some excitement. We had a chili cook-off, and we had lots of fun and fellowship, right? Amen. So, we have a winner this morning. Yeah, for the best pot of chili there was. Miss Amber, would you like stand to stand up, up and stand show up. your trophy? Stand up. There it is. How about that? That's great. And Brother Zach, I believe, up here in the booth, he came in second. So we had a lot of good cooks last night, and we really enjoyed it, didn't we? Brother Jacob, I'm, Jacob, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I get my Zachs and my Jacobs and my Zions and all that mixed <laughs> up. So you'll have to forgive me. Like I said, I have to have my memory with me. Amen. Also, last night we had some little elves that decorated the Christmas tree out front. Yeah. Would like would they like to stand up this morning so we can shout Amen? Yay, stand amen. Up. Stand up. Oh, boy! I think they had fun too. The tree looks wonderful. We love it. Thank you. Good for you. <laughs> All right, ladies. We have a meeting coming up on the 16th, and it's going to be for cookies and candy. Yeah. We're going to have a trade-off or something like that, a swap. <laughs> anyway, the ladies, if you will bring three dozen cookies or candy at about 11 a.m. on the 16th, we'll uh, share our cookies and our candy and if you would like to bring some finger foods, we'll have lunch, okay? We'll have some fun, girls. I understand this is an exciting time, so we've got a lot of good cooks. Amen? All right. Pastor Stacy couldn't make it this morning, but she said she will be here by 4 p.m. for prayer. So, girls, keep her in your prayers. Surround her with your love. You know, at a time like this, that's about all you can do is love the person and let them know that you care. Amen? Amen. So we have prayer at 4 o'clock with Stacy, and so I guess that's about it. Any, any other announcements? Okay. I have a scripture I'd like to share with you. And it comes from 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Do you get that? His power is made strong in you. His power is made perfect in you when you feel like you're weak. He will strengthen you. So therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses 
so that Christ's power may rest on me. Amen? Amen. God's word is true. Amen. See, sometimes it's not the load that breaks you down. It's the way you carry it. Amen? Amen. So we're going to carry our loads with the Lord Jesus Christ as our strength and our power. Amen. Amen. That's all I have. Let's go to prayer, please. Father God, we welcome your presence here with us this morning. We thank you, Father God, that we have the opportunity to come together, together as one, your church, Lord. It's your church. It's not my church. It's not our church. It's your church, Father God. And we praise you and thank you, Lord, that you have called us here at this specific time, dear Father, in history. Lord, we are so fortunate, dear Father God, so blessed to be a part of these last days. And we thank you, Lord, for sharing them with us. We thank you, Father God, for our services this morning, Lord. We want to worship you and give you honor and glory, dear Father. We want our lips to praise you, Father God. We want our hands to clap and express our gratitude and our love for you, Lord. We want, dear Father God, your will to be done this day in our lives. And Father, we will cease not to give you glory, but to always give you glory and love and majesty. Lord, we love you, and we praise you, and thank you for this special day in our lives. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Singing how 
tells the sun to rise every morning, colors the sky with the shades of his glory, wakes us with mercy and love. Jesus loves Who holds the ark Comforts the will Cries for injustice And feels every sorrow Carries the pain of his children Jesus 
There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, man on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you got. There's honey in the rock.
Praise God. It's amazing to serve a wonderful God that gives generously to all who call on him. All of our possessions in our lives are made possible through God's grace and generosity. God has given each and every one of us a unique ability to provide for ourselves and our families, and his spirit lives inside of us and tends to every one of our needs. Scripture tells us in Proverbs, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. As Paul stated in 2 Corinthians, but I want it to be a willing gift, not one given grudgingly. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will be given a generous crop. You must each desire, decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus for your help to guide us in tithing our gifts willingly and generously from our abundance that's only provided by you. We want to give cheerfully and abundantly to you. Your love is truly an amazing feeling, and I pray, Father God, that we all experience an increase in your love with each tithe and offering. As followers of your word, each and every one of us are tasked to spread the good news and grow your kingdom by helping those in and outside of our church. May these offerings assist in that task as we strive to grow your church, your community, and your heavenly kingdom as you see fit. All the power, glory, and honor is yours and only yours. Amen.
Church, raise your hands and give thanks. Wonderful Lord. Praise you, Lord. Provide Save Lord. Give thanks. You may be seated. Kids are dismissed. Well, good morning, Destiny. Good morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give thanks for, to the Lord for a grateful heart, right? We have so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. We have circumstances, situations come in our life, and sometimes we forgive to give thanks. And uh, it's important that we do that. It's important that we begin to re reel our heart to him. Mama's here today. How's that little one doing? Let's give the Lord a hand for it. Hallelujah. New, new one. Praise God. There he is. Hallelujah. Daddy, don't you show your little one off there? Hallelujah. Wow. He almost looks like he's full grown. <laughs> Amen. What a beauty. Oh, my, oh my Lord, look at that. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Awesome. His name? Writer. Writer. He's going to do a great writing for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad for a new birth. You know, it's growth. Thank God we need more youth and stuff. You know, we need to encourage people. How many know that we are taking tea couple area for the glory of God here? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. We're in a Christmas season. We can begin to share the love of Jesus Christ and why he came about the birth of Christ. When you go shopping, you know, tell people Merry Christmas. Not Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas. Because it's all about Jesus. And uh, that's, why we're, that's why it's the birth of Christ. That's why we're all here today. And I want to encourage you when you go shopping, you see something, you know. Buy a gift for someone that you may not know, you know, or, or someone in, a, in your area. Take a little gift to them and say, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And tell them this is a time, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. It's all about that. And we as a church, we need to disciple people. Bring them in and bring them up to the, the admonition and ways of the Lord. That's what God's called us to do. Yes. We're not to keep our faith to ourselves, we're to give it out. 
Bible says, given shall be what? Given to you. The more you give your faith out, the more you're going to receive more faith in Christ Jesus. You'll be stronger. And, and great things begin to happen, praise God. So I just want to encourage you and all that we need to give thanks to the Lord. And uh, we continue to pray for Pastor. Hallelujah. We speak strength to her in Jesus' name. Gives the beloved rest, and we just praise God for her. We thank you that whatever she needs to do, whatever she needs to take care of, we're here to support her and uplift her in every single way. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's many different avenues I could go this morning, but uh, I have to say, as I prayed, I said, God, I want your will to be done. And uh, just going to open up with something here as a comment about... Uh, this young boy was standing on a corner, and uh, a gentleman came by, and he said, uh, I'm the new pastor in town. He said, uh, can you show me or tell me where the, or I can find the post office? The boy said, go down about three blocks and to your right, and you'll see it over in the corner. He said, do you go to church anywhere? He said, no. He said, I've got a church service, you know, we're starting out for our first service tomorrow, and we'd like to have you come. And he said, when you come... I'll show you how you can find the way to heaven. The little boy thought for a minute, scratched his head and said, how can you show me the way to heaven when you don't know where the post office is? <laughs> I mean, all we need to have a, not only a grateful heart, but a joyful heart, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The title of this message you want is Developing in Christ. We begin to share uh, Wednesday night on some things about Christ, and if you come this Wednesday night, we'll, I'll pass out some more stuff. But it's, a, it's important to realize that His life is in us. His life is in you. You're, you're alive in a Christ Jesus. And it's so important to know that because the enemy is going to come, to what Satan comes and what to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10.10. And he's going to try to do it with everyone in this room. He's going to try to do it with your neighbors and your friends and your brothers and sisters and everything else. And therefore, we need to know who we are in Christ Jesus. And know what the, his life in us. It's so important because as we begin to look up here, if you want to put that, Jake, put that on. His life is in us. But also, let's put up the, the file that shows the four things there. If you got Jake, please. Now, why we're doing this is, you know, applying God's Word to my life daily. We know it's important to do that. That's a daily thing. It's a walk with Him continuously. How many know that you uh, take a shower every day or every other day, or at, least, or at least once a week or something? You know, I mean, I mean you know, we just, why, if you don't, what happens is you start, you know, having an odor, right? You don't smell good, see? So, you know, you seek the kingdom first. He's God's focus. Number two, we claim his promises and follow his instructions to the body and is to, to, here to help. We must serve one another other than ourselves, plant seed, and produce fruit, a harvest. This is something that, you know, Pastor Rob showed us and began to deal with us. All of a sudden, you know, the Spirit of God began to speak to me and said, I want you to build on that. Because why? God institute, that's what he wants, and so that's what we're going to do. Go along with what he wants to do. Amen? So we see something here. we got to seek first the kingdom of God. How many know where that's at? Who can tell me where that's at? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all these things should be added in. Where's that at? I'm a, I'm a Bible teacher, so you need, you're not going to know. Where's that? It's the word, but where's you find it in the word? Matthew 6, 33. I'm a teacher. I, I had a Bible school. I, I taught the Word. The thing is that we need to know where the Word is. How many know? How many mechanics are here? New mechanics, okay. How many uh, work in furnaces? And I know we got one brother that works sells parts and stuff like that. So, anyways, you know, we need to know where our stuff's at. Isn't that right? In a parts store, you know where the stuff at? Jason, do you know where the, all the stuff at? is at? The store. So, wh why do you have to know that? Do what? Got to help, got to help, help people out. Got to know where stuff is at. So now, as a guy, when you see a guy comes in, he wants a part for air conditioning or a furnace. 
You, he's not going to stay there all day. You've got to know where the part's at and go get it. A mechanic has to know where the tools that he's got and how to use those tools. My brother over here that plays the piano, he's got to know where the keys are at and what the keys are going to do and what they're going to say when he pushes the keys. And so the thing is, he knows it where they're all at. We need to know where those things. The same thing, we need to know where the Word of God is so we can stand. Because why? You need to speak to the mountain, be thou removed, and cast into a doubt in your heart, but believe what you say, it shall come to pass. We're going we're gonna to have things going to attack us. That's, hey, that's life, honey. That's the way it is. But we have the victory because why? Jesus Christ destroyed the power of the devil. Like, like I said, you know, in, in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. How many want things added unto you? you got to seek him first. That's what the Bible says. He gives us, he gives us um, instructions what to do. We were working on the bus the other day, and uh, we had to change. It only got 39,000 miles on it, and the, the diesels, the buses there, they have... Uh, um, cooling they put in there and to keep the exhaust cool and stuff so because of the diesel and through the emissions and all this stuff we had to take it all out but we had to get the instructions how to take the thing out because you can't remove the panel on the front the engineers didn't figure that out so we have to get out how to how to take the the get door open the door up and stick your hand in there a little round space of six inches and put two hands in there try to unplug all this stuff and take the bolts out it was it was, a, it was a, a nightmare. Let me tell you that. So we finally got the thing out, and then we had to put a hole, put a hole, put a pump in there, you know, to, to pump on that. And so, anyways, the thing is, we need to know what to do. We had to get instructions to do it. So Jesus gives us the instructions in the Bible what we need to do, how to fix things. But see, we we've got to learn to know where the word is, so we can go to the instruction manual, so we can have help, have total victory in Jesus' name. Everybody understand what I'm saying? We have to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. Because the Bible said if we're not a doer of the word, we're deceived. we got to be a doer of the word. The Bible says you know the truth, the truth shall what? Set you free. Make you free. Actually, the word make is really the, the word that should be in there. Because set means it's already been molded. Make means to mold you and shape you to be in the image of Almighty God. The word will mold you and shape you, just like you take dough and begin to mold it and make bread and all that stuff. You, you knead it and all that stuff, and you put it in there. It molds it. It's the same thing when you make someone. God's going to make you to be like in his image and his likeness. He's going to be like him. The Bible talks about in Acts 17, 28, In him we live and move and have our being. Even the own poets have said, We are his offspring. We're the offspring of God. You look at yourself in there. You are the offspring of God. Because why? That's what he said you are. Now, what somebody else says is not by what a feeling. It's what the Word of God says that you are. So the also that we need to understand, you know, in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteous. In Matthew 6, 34, says, Be no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. How many worry about tomorrow? Hmm? We need to take care of today. We, we need to enjoy today. There's so many times you know, we, get, we get rushy in our, in our area of life, you know, and we get so, you know, we don't enjoy what we're doing. We, or we're so busy, being so busy trying to get this stuff done that we don't enjoy what we're doing. Why are we doing it? God wants you to enjoy life. In Him, there's life and that more abundantly, Amen. So he wants you to enjoy life. So it's important for us to enjoy life is begin to take that time. We just got through, we married a, did a ceremony or produced or performed a ceremony for a couple to get married. And about a week before that, I thought they were going to not get married. <laughs> they, were, they were having all kinds of stuff. I, we, we counsel marriage counsel, my wife and I, together and stuff. And so... They were, they were there and different situations that come up and stuff, you know, and all of a sudden they had to think, we got to get all this done before we get married. And all of a sudden I said to him, what do you mean, what do you got to get done? 
well, we got to sell this house and we got to get this thing set over there. I said, who says you do? The house going to go anywhere? No. Are these other things going to go anywhere? No. We worry about it. Let's take care of what you got to take care of now. Why don't you enjoy getting everything ready to get married? Then they said, asked me, he said, how long is the ceremony going to last? I said, the rest of your life. <laughs> you got you to gotta, you gotta begin to develop yourself in Christ Jesus. You got to develop yourself as a husband and wife. You're developing yourself by having a new addition around. Wait till the addition starts wanting to be up at nighttime and daytime they want to sleep. <laughs> That's part of growth. That's part of development. So develop in Christ. We have to develop ourselves in Christ Jesus. Let's look at uh, 1 John, if you've got your Bibles there. I'm not an electronic guy. A lot of some of you are, which is all right. 1 John 4, 7. I like to look in the Bible because then I know what's before it and after it. Jake, these two spotlights, can you sort of turn them down a little bit, please? Right in my eyes, I can't see. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Be 1 John 4, 7. How many got it? You got an electronic Bible, I can tell. <laughs> okay, 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love of, 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 it is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of Christ has been manifested towards us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that He might live through Him. In this love... Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son for a propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God is so loves us, we also ought to love one another. So we see the thing is, when we have the life of Christ inside of us, we're going to see there's going to be a nature coming out of you. How many know God's nature? What's God's nature? His love. God's nature is love, period. So if you're in Christ Jesus, what is your nature to be? You need to be developing in love. We had an evangelist I knew to travel all over the world. I won't mention his name, but anyways, he and his wife had been married about nine years, almost ten years, and they didn't have any children. And so on the way home, he's flying about 35,000 feet, you know, and American Airlines, and all of a sudden, you know, he asked the Spirit of God, he says, why, why haven't we have any children? He said, when you start loving your wife better, you'll have the children. Just like that. Well, what, what am I doing wrong? He said, you just need to be gentle and more gentle with her. So I began to be more gentler and stuff like that. About a year and a half, they had twins. Ooh. So the thing is, see, we need to love. We've got to develop that love that's inside of us, praise God. We have to learn to start lo loving the unlovely. Mmm. I have to kick myself because I'm the same way. Mmm. <laughs> God, love the unlovely. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. God first loved us, so we need to love one another, praise God. See, the thing is, when we don't love one another, we are not dead to ourselves. We're alive unto ourselves, and we're going to do it our way, not His way. Because His life is in us. We have His nature. 
The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this life. Do you realize how much the Father in heaven loves you? We have to realize Jesus says, I do nothing unless what the Father tells me to do. He's not working independent with his Father. He works with his Father. He said, you see me, you've seen the Father also. I and the Father are one. We work together. How many know we need to be one in the Spirit of God? And we have to learn to crucify our flesh. We have to learn to put it down because of his love for us. Jesus went to the cross even in the Garden of Gethsemane and he started praying and he said, Lord, if, let, this, will, let this, this cup pass for me. Let, let, let go by. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done because he knew that he was going to be separated from his father. He had never in his whole entire life that he's been separated from his father. Because why? The sin, the father can't look at the sin and the sin went, all the sins of the world went upon Jesus. Everything. All the sins. Every sin you can think of went on Jesus. Past, present, and future. Hallelujah. That's when Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. When we accept Christ as our personal Savior, Romans 10, Romans 10, 9 and 10, believe in your heart, confess your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, you should be saved. We have to, all of us have to do that, you know, my, and I'll just bring this back up a little bit here. My mother, for years, I asked, I said, Mom, do you, do you know you're saved? Are you saved? Well, I go to church. I said, Mom, church don't get you saved. You can go to church so Jesus comes and never, you'll never be saved. you got to believe in your heart, confess your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You have to believe that I'm a sinner, and you're the only one who can set me free from that prison of sin. Maybe I gotta, I gotta be that. You gotta be a new creature in Christ Jesus. So the thing is that we have His life in us. That's what we're gonna deal with today. We have His life in us. Romans eight ten talks about, but if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life because of righteousness. The spirit of life. He gives you life. Hallelujah. When you begin to realize that you're saved and set free, you're going to have a continuous revival inside of you. Do you know you're supposed to be the revival? You don't need to travel around trying to find revivals. You're to be the revival. You're, you're, to, you're to stir yourselves up and let Christ be in you. You're to be the revival to encourage other people to say, I need to let the light of, shine, let the light of Jesus shine through my life. It doesn't matter what other people think. We've got to get off that. God has not given us spirit of fear, but power of love, and so am I. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Don't, don't worry about what other people think. We as Christians, we, we've been real good at trying to be like a chameleon. You know, not a comedian, but a chameleon. You know what a chameleon is? They sort of like to blend in. We've got to stop blending in, and we've got to speak that, that voice for the glory of God. Because why? Jesus Christ died on the cross to set, he shed his love to give us, to set us free. How many like to be set free? How many know we need to set others free? We have that opportunity. We, we are serving us. We just share the good news of Jesus Christ with somebody. Especially this is a good time of the year to do it. Because the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. See, we got to not be a chameleon anymore. We got to come out from among them and be separate, the Bible said. We got to be separate from them. We got to be a light of God. When people start saying, oh, here comes that Jesus freak, that's all right. Let's be a true Jesus freak. Tell them about the truth. Because we're to do that. <coughs> Sing about the truth. Invite people who don't know the truth and, and have them and share the truth with them. I had a little boy Wednesday, Wednesday he talked about it. He's on my bus, and he's a kindergartner, and he said, uh, man, my leg hurts. I said, well, let's pray for it. Okay, he's, he's standing up. I said, well, I just prayed, and the other kids are going, I just prayed for him. We saw that guess you know. He started, started walking a couple walks, you know, and he started to get the door. He said, 
It feels good. It's gone. Next morning or next afternoon, I, I, he, I, he gets the afternoon run, so I pick up in the afternoon. I said, how's your leg? He said, ah, no, no problem, man. I, I can do all kinds of things right now. He said, don't bother me with it. Kindergartner. Tell him about Jesus. One time right here in this church, we had over 80 to 100 kids. We picked them up and had several workers and stuff, you know. And we had people be set free. Tell them about Jesus. Fill the Holy Spirit. Healings. All kinds of stuff that went on here. There's two people right there that were there when we had them. We had kids everywhere, didn't we? Three people right there. Barbara. And we're going to see it again. We're going to see more. We're going to see growth in this church. We're going to see how we're going to add on. We're going to have to get a bigger parking lot. Because why? Jesus Christ is setting us free so we can go out and get others set free. So the T couple area is going to be free in Jesus. Because that's what it's about. Hallelujah. So you can ask Christ to come into your life, Romans 10, 9 and 10. His Spirit comes in you. And so how we know that the Spirit of God comes in you, let's look at in the Old Testament, it was prophesied. Ezekiel, if you want to look at Ezekiel uh, 36, 24. 36, 24. Because the Spirit of God comes in you. I was studying one day and I said, look at this. It tells you about, you know, what takes place in our lives. So we'll start at verse 24. For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of the countries and bring you into the, your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. How many know we get, about, there's a song about you know, getting sprinkled with water, right? All right. Clean water. I will, I will cleanse you in all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit within you. What happens when you get born again? He puts a, takes that stony heart out and gives you a new spirit. If you want to write this down, as, and I'll, give you, I'll, I'll finish reading this in a moment, but if you want to write this down, Jeremiah 32, uh, 39, and Ezekiel 11, uh, 19. There are other scriptures for that. I will give you a new heart, and I'll put, I'll take, I'm sorry, I'll put a new heart and a, put a new spirit within you. I will take out the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statures, and I will keep, uh, keep my judgments and will do them. Then you shall be dwelling in the land that I will give you of your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleanliness and so on and so forth. You can read it all out. And then he says, I will multiply the fruit of your trees and cleanse you from your idols. Or feel, I'm sorry, uh, um, cease, I'm sorry, increase your fields and so that you need never again be, bring reproach or famine upon the nations. So now we see where God will put his spirit inside of you. Hallelujah. So we see here, I will take you from the nations and gather you from the countries and bring you into your own land. I mean, well, it's a spiritual land that God's talking about. We have a spiritual land that we live in. I mean, all your, when you get born again, you're seated in the heavenly places of Christ Jesus. You're with Him. Anybody that knows Christ? When they leave this earth, heaven's their home. Your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life before you even get born again. Because why? God knows that I'm going to cause you, and you have a choice to make. How many know your will is the strongest thing on planet earth? 
Nobody can violate your will. God cannot violate your will. The devil can't violate your will. You choose to this, this day who you're going to serve. The Bible says you choose this day who you're going to serve. You have to make a choice. Every day you get up, you got to make a choice. Am I going to serve God or serve myself? Am I going to do what he wants me to do or am I going to do what I want to do? <laughs> so we have a decision every day. Because why? God loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to have victory. Say, God wants me to have victory. Because the thing is, that's what he said in the Word of God. It's God's victory, not your victory. He causes you to have that victory. Because like I said before, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. And remember how many talks about in John, the 14th chapter, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other. He says, I am. Meaning he, making a, he is making a statement of fact. I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. So in other words, if we're going to be a Christian, we need to go, he's the truth, he's the way, and he's my life. <coughs> he's the truth, he's the way, he's my life. And every day we need to thank him and say, thank you, Lord. You're my way, you're my truth, and you're my life. Guide me today what you want me to have. Show me what you want. I give you permission to work in my life. Because his life is in us. We have a position in Christ. Everybody say that. Because, because, of, because of, of his life is in us or in me, we have a position in Christ. You have a position. Your position in Christ Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. How many know what a position is? How many have a position of management? What's that mean? What, what, that, what, that, what does that, that detail? Being in a position of management. Huh? It means you have to set an example. You got to be that example. You got to know, you got to be that person that's going to work with people and develop people and so on and so forth. Because why? A position is something that's special. I mean, no, you can't be sloppy in a position. I mean, no, you can't be a sloppy painter. That's what, I, sometimes you get, you know, We've had some painters that are kind of sloppy, weren't they, Jeanette? But anyways, I said, nah, you guys have to go. I'll finish it. <laughs> but anyways, you know, because of his life in us, we have a, a position in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It's so important to realize that. That we're a light to the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We hit this on Wednesday night, but I'm going to hit it again. Second Corinthians 5, 17. I'm actually going to go up to verse uh, 15. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for him who died to them, he rose again. How many know Christ rose again? In Romans, you know, talks about, you know, 11 talks about the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is quick in your mortal body. The very same spirit is in you. When Jesus died on the cross, said it was finished, the veil went from top to bottom, and the Spirit of God was released. So all men or anybody could actually ask Christ to come in their lives. Be born again. That same Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, has quickened your mortal body. Just think about it. The very same Spirit that God, that God breathed into Adam is in you. Whoa. 
That very same spirit that he breathed in Adam is in you. That's why we got to stir it up. We had some cooking stuff, you know. Last night we had all kinds of food. And how many know a lot of that stuff you had to stir? Why do you stir it? Brings out the flavor, doesn't it? Brings out the ingredients. Brings out all the things there. You got to stir that up, that spirit up inside of you. You got. You got. You, you got to recognize that all of a sudden, you know, when things start going wrong. It's not because of someone else. You can't say, well, the devil made me do it. It's, it's you yielded to what the devil wants you to do. You have to say, no. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. I'm alive unto God now. He's my Lord. So it talks about here in, in verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to flesh, even though... We have known Christ according to flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone in Christ, he is a what? New creation. When you get up, when you get up praise God, in the morning say, I'm, a, I'm in a new creation. And start having revival in yourself. Start stirring that spirit up inside of you and say, praise God, I'm a new creation. I didn't do anything. God did it. He's telling me I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. It means praise God, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Oh, my back sore. My legs hurt. But I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. By his stripes, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Because of the new creation, God, I'm healed in Jesus' name. It still hurts. Just keep praising him. Paul and Silas, you know, were hurting him when they were in prison after they got thrown in there, you know. They, they were in there, and, and they began to praise God at midnight. They're in stocks, been beat. What happens? All of a sudden, the, all the prison doors opened up. And that's a real key right there. When you start beginning to praise God, the prison door that the devil's trying to put you in there, they won't, they won't shut the froze. They're open. He'll open them up. God will open those doors up. Hallelujah. See, this stuff here, we can't just take it nonchalantly. We've got to realize that we're in a warfare. We fight the fight of faith. It's a fight of faith, folks. Yes. That's right. You've been reading my notes. <laughs> That's the Spirit of God. But because we have this, you know, authority in Jesus Christ, He's given us authority that we can say on this mountain, Be thou removed and cast thee not doubt in your heart, but believe what you say shall come to pass. Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, 25. Got to say to this mountain, we got to speak to things. I'll tell you what, before I was a Christian, I spoke to things real differently. <laughs> I made it agree with me. <laughs> See, the thing is, we get mad and get upset, but the thing is, that doesn't change anything. We're still mad and upset. What changes things, we begin to take the, the scriptures of God's word, begin to confess those scriptures, realize that we have the authority, and we say in this mountain, be thou removed. No, you can't do this, devil. This is it. You might have to stand a little bit. This little boy came in the house and said, Mommy, 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 I fell off my tricycle. I'm, I'm bang, you know, my, my knee hurts and stuff. So she began to pray for him and said, Father, we thank you for your healing power in Jesus' name. We thank you for the manifestation of the healing power in Jesus' name. Little boy went out. About an hour later, come back in. He said, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. He says, What, John? He says, When is the man from the station going to come? Sometimes they wonder when the manifestation is going to come. But we have to still stay in faith and praise God for his goodness. Because he loves us. He knows what's going on. You know, things don't catch God off guard. He knows what's going on. 
He's in charge. Amen. So now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not imputing their trespasses on them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ through, through God. <clears throat> We're pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, and he made him to be no sin for us that we might become the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. You're the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. I know we've got some religious people say, but it's not our righteousness. We're not talking about your righteousness. We're talking about his righteousness, and he's telling you, you are the rights of God in Christ. doesn't matter what you feel about it. That's what it is, because you're a child of God. You're developing in Christ. When you're developing in Christ, you have God's nature inside of you. So it's important we begin to operate in God's nature. God spoke the worlds into existence. He said, let there be, and there was. There's power in your words. They're creative words. God created you to be a creative being. And he wants you to begin to use the creative words to have victory in life. Last week we talked about 2 Peter, you know, the first chapter, that, you know, um, He's given us exceeding great and precious promises by these who are partakers of his divine nature. He's given you great and precious promises. We got to begin to exercise them. We got to begin to use them. If our brothers talked about up here, he said, I can play the piano and sits there and does nothing. You don't hear any keys. You kind of wonder, does he know how to play the piano? All right. So in other words, when you all of a sudden you know he's playing the piano because why? He's playing music. He makes music out there. So you know he's a piano player because he's making music that we can understand. And that's what we need to do. We've got to take the word of God and begin to speak to those things and speak to the devil. Don't let him give a foothold in, in many, anything. Now, again, I'll say I thank God for doctors. If it wasn't for doctors, half the Christian population it would be, it wouldn't be here. The thing for doctors is you begin to use the doctors to begin to build your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and have victory. I fight the devil any way I can. It don't make any difference. I'm going to have the victory no matter what. No matter what, I'm going to have it. Because God told me I can. But I've got to make a stand. I've got to take that shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. In Ephesians 6, 18, chapter, or 6, chapter verse 18. You've got to take the shield of faith to quench those fiery darts. You've got to make your stand because why? You're developing in Christ. I'll close with this. That baby right there that she's got is a human being. Got all of his fingers, got all of his arms, got all of his toes, got his eyes, got everything you know that has need of to be a human being. Am I right? But guess what? It's not developed yet. He's got to grow into things. Guess what we got to do as a baby Christian? We got to begin to grow into things. We got to be developed in Christ Jesus. We got to let the power of God grow us. So how do we grow? We feast ourselves on the Word of God. Continues. You let the Word of God dwell in you richly. You speak the Word of God. You begin to be a doer of the Word of God. You give permission to the Word of God. I mean, oh, we talked about, Pastor, I was talking about giving permission. We got to give permission. To God do a work in your life. You got to say, oh, I got this all. No, you don't got it. <laughs> None of us have got it. <laughs> Every day I get up to it and give it to the Lord, show me what you want. <clears throat> I finally learning in my age to get out of being pig-headed. I mean, what the word pig-headed means, doing my own thing. Being, you know. <clears throat> but anyways, we have to let God work in our life. We're developing. We're all in stages of different development. That's why the strong is to help the weak. The weak yields to the, to the strong. That's why it's so important that we see things. The enemy doesn't like what's going on, but we have to stand guard and tell him to get off. Hit the road, Jack. Don't come back no more. All of a sudden, Steve Sanson told me, he said, you're not going to be sick no more. I took that, praise God. Amen. 
and God began to share with me and stuff like that. I let some things slip in my life, and I had to make some corrections. Ooh, I thought you're a minister. Hey, we make mistakes, folks. Don't let any minister tell you he doesn't, because I say he's a liar. I'll pray for him. Get it? No, the truth starts coming. Because it, it, we all have areas that we got to work on. We're all in development. We got to let him develop us. You might as well know me. I'm just point blank. How much is I just. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> she'll, tell, she'll tell me every time. I'll tell you. <laughs> I got one more scripture, and I'll, I'll close with this and we go. I love you all very much. Love this church. I want to look at Galatians. Just before Ephesians. Galatians 2, chapter 2. How'd that crew Jake curve up there? Galatians 2, 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. He has a real key right there. It's not about me anymore. It's about him. Who, 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 li who lives, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. It's not about me anymore. <clears throat> when things start bothering me that my wife may be doing or whatever, you know, and I have to examine myself and say, wait a minute now. Is Sherman coming alive here? Or am I letting Christ live? If I get irritated about something, you know, Sherm's coming to come alive again. I got to put Sherm down. not about me anymore. It's about him. If I'm going to be the light of Jesus, I've got to let him live through me in every area of my life. Not just one part, but all of my parts. That's development. Because God loved me. That's why it's easy to serve one another because it's not about me anymore. It's about him living through me. It's not my way or the highway. The old selfish way is about Christ living in me, allowing his light to shine through me. It's being truthful with people, telling people the truth, not hiding, but letting Christ live through me. That's development. And we're all in the stages of being developed. God is molding us and shaping us. We're clay. He's the potter. But as we stand on the Word of God, that Word will begin to mold us and shape us to be the image of Almighty God. And that's why I say, you know, in John 8, 32, you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. It means to mold you and shape you to be in the image of Almighty God. If you're here today, Maybe you've gotten cold some areas of your life. You let Jesus take control of your life. We all blow it. I don't care who we are. I do it. But we can ask God to forgive us, you know, when we ask Christ to come alive in Romans 10, 9, and 10, being born again. As a child of God, 1 John 1, 9 said, We blow it and make mistakes. He's an advocate. Jesus is the advocate standing. He com we commit sin. He says, just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John 1 9. It's simple. All you got to do, if you can't ask Jesus to forgive you, you're not going to ask somebody else to forgive you. It starts with you asking Christ, Lord, forgive me. I, I blew it here. Then I had to go sometimes to people and say, forgive me, I, I acted rashly. I said things I shouldn't have said. I did things I shouldn't have done. 
But when you can confess it to Jesus, all of a sudden strength comes start coming inside you. It means you're starting to be developed in Christ Jesus that you can go have victory. I don't know about anybody else, but I know when I ask somebody to forgive me, you know, man, all of a sudden something happens inside of me. Thank you for the victory, Lord. Some of the people I had the outs with, you know, and asked them to forgive me, my actions and so on and so forth, you know. We're best friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you want God to need prayer and anything, you know, ask Christ to come to your life or, hey, I need prayer to have strength in this area so I can love like I need to love. Forgive, I need to give, forgive. Come on up here, we'll pray with you. The Bible says, you know, call for the elders. Confess your faults one to another. And you'll restore you. I was a mess many, many years ago. An alcoholic, woman chaser, everything you name it, I do it. Because I got into myself. But Jesus, because of his great love, set me free. That's my testimony. All because of the love of Jesus. So if anybody needs prayer this morning in any area, for strength or whatever, come on up here. We'll pray for you this morning. Anoint you with oil. We're here. My wife and I both have hurts, habits, and hang-ups. But Christ has set us free. And he'll set you free. That God wants this church a healthy, vibrant, walking, proclaiming faith church and setting people free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for these precious people. Thank you for the privilege you've given me, Father God. I can share the word that you shared with me this year with them. Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for your great love. I thank you, Father God, that we have people that are hurting. We have people, Father God, that are being attacked physically. And, Father, we thank you that we pray healing for each one in Jesus' name. Pray for peace for each one, Father. Pray for joy for each one. Thank you, Father, for your great love. Teach me, Lord, teach me more how to love others, forgive others. Teach me, Father, to be more like you. Develop me, Father God, to be in your area like you in every area. Let's say this together in Jesus' name. Develop me to be more like you, to act more like you, and be a doer of, of what you want. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother, let's, let's. I'm a new creation. Let's all stand together and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Man. Old things have passed away. I've, I've been born again. again. Give the Lord a hand, praise God. Go rejoicing. Hallelujah. Courage.